active versus passive range of motion. So I'm gonna talk about what I actually mean by passive and active today, and why using some of these tools and assessments could be beneficial for you and your clients. So by passive, what I'm talking about is really assisted range of motion. So the example I'm gonna to use today is you assisting your clients moving their hips. So you could have them lie on the back, for example, and you are moving their hip into some flexion maybe some internal external rotation, maybe some abduction, some adduction, but you are doing that to the client. You are assisting them in that movement. And then the active range of motion is basically looking at how much movement they can use themselves. So there's no assistance at all. You're looking at how they use and coordinate movement within their brain, essentially. So how can these two be useful and is there a difference? So I think a lot of the time, the, the dangerous road we go down is thinking about looking at passive range of motion and thinking that's gonna equal the active. So just because you've got someone on the mat and you can see some movement in the hip, it doesn't mean they can use that movement and create that movement themselves. Because you don't find out when someone's lying on the mat how they actually map movement in their brain. And when we look at movement, it's all about the brain mapping and how they can use it and coordinate it. So what would passive be good for? Well, passive could be useful for just getting a client to relax a little bit maybe at the beginning or the end of a session, I think it's a useful tool to use. You can start to maybe build a bit of confidence in the client. Again, if they're experiencing a bit of pain, discomfort in their hips or their lower back, you could just relax them and allow their joint to flex. Just you helping them move in and out of movement could be a really useful tool. And then you can start to assess if there's any sensitivity there. Client can give you a bit of feedback. And again, you can just create a better, more relaxing environment for them. So that could be a useful tool. So the active, what can we find out from that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, that's gonna be actually looking at the brain mapping, the motor control, the central nervous system. How does that coordinate and use movement? You can gather so much information with that. You can find out again if there's some sensitivity, you can find out if there's some asymmetries, and you can find out just generally a lot more about their movement through watching them move. It sounds obvious, but again, the dangerous road we go down is going too far at the passive stuff and not spending as much time as we need to on that active range of motion. So I would say both can be beneficial. I would personally have a bias towards starting at the active range of stuff, unless I had someone come in uh, in more kind of acute injury state. I would generally start at the active. And if I needed to do a bit of investigation work, then of course I can get a client on the floor and I can look at the shoulders or I can look at their hips if needed. So the big take home is realize that as with everything when it comes to movement, everything's got its place. It's just learning what to use for the right person in the right context.